Hi, I'm Ibi, and you're listening to Kill the Cat. On this episode, we're talking about Brooklyn Nine-Nine and the not-so-secret formula for cold opens. If you haven't seen the series yet, there are some spoilers for Season 2 and 4, so it's probably worth watching through first. But if you're up to date, then sit back and enjoy the episode. Alright, so today we are talking about... We're talking about cold opens. And the king of cold opens... Is Brooklyn Nine-Nine, of course. Of course, obviously. There have been some great foreshadows to Brooklyn Nine-Nine. The Office is very famous for their cold opens. Parks and Recreation do some great cold opens. Yeah. But Brooklyn Nine-Nine has kind of perfected it. Yeah. So today we're going to go through, basically try to unravel the formula for how to do these cold opens. Uh, And then we're going to talk about some of our favorites, some of the fan favorites, uh, and just kind of talk about how they use that formula. Uh, It's not a complex formula. It's pretty standard. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, a cold open is kind of like a small skit at the beginning of an episode. It doesn't really relate to the plot at all. It's its own little story. Brooklyn Nine-Nine will commonly do this for about maybe a minute average length long and then they'll cut to the opening credits in brooklyn 99's case it's the <laughs> how great is brooklyn 99 oh what a great show i've seen it so many times i we it's it's really great just like background tv like yeah it's great to sit there and watch it but then it's also great once you've watched it to just go back just have it on i'm like 20 minute episodes Great characters, great Such story. Such good characters, good character development. Mm. It's fun going back to like season one and yeah, knowing where they're all going to go. Yeah. And it, I mean, that kind of plays into how the cold opens happen as well. Yeah. So they yeah. do character. So yeah. Should we start with the Brooklyn Nine-Nine structure? The formula. The formula. The magic formula of how to do the perfect cold open. Uh, and for our example, we found one that just fits this formula to a T. And it's the full bullpen! The full bullpen! So, in the cold open, the full bullpen, they're on the night shift, everyone's a bit depressed, and they're all crowded up in this little room because someone's waxing the floors. And Jake, to raise everyone's spirit, says he's gonna do the full bullpen. And Rose is like, no, he's like, yes! What is the full bullpen? Basically, he puts on socks and tries to skid all the way across the floor. Does so, there's slow motion, there's triumphant music. And then the elevators open. Captain Holt is there. Oh no, oh no. Jake flies in to the elevator. The doors close. Silence. The doors open. The full ball pen. And it's just Captain Holt with Jake's like hand raised in the air in triumph. Yeah. Okay, what's the formula? Number one. Number one. Set up. So we set up by showing the waxing of the floors and then bringing in the idea of doing the full bullpen. And we set up that it's not been done. It's crazy. It's madness. It can't be done. Where we move into... The escalation. So this is when they take the idea of the setup and they just, well, they escalate it as far as they can go. So in this one, we've got the happy music playing. It's slow motion. We're cutting away to the other nine nine members and their reaction. Uh, The elevator doors open. Oh no, it's Captain Holt, who's their boss. And Jake like screams and slides into the elevator. So that's like is escalating the comedy of that situation pretty much as far as it can go. Mm. But that is not the end of a good cold open. Evie, tell us the end of the perfect cold open. The end of the perfect cold open is of course the twist. We're watching these elevator doors. We're seeing the other members of Brooklyn Nine-Nine who are very worried and the elevator doors open and halt our serious stoic boss raises Jake's hand in triumph. The full bullpen. He's just as into it as everyone else. We end happy and the music cuts in. And that's how you do a cold open. Uh, we're going to run through a few more and to see, because not everyone's exactly the same. No. And the kind of the point of a cold open is it gets you laughing before the episode even starts. It's almost like the warm up act that comes out before the stand up comedian to warm up the crowd for you. Like it's really clever mm. storytelling, especially in comedy. Yeah, it sets the tone, especially especially not just for comedy, but for sitcoms, it works really well yeah. because it's, it brings us into the environment. It brings us into the tone of the show. Uh, you can kind of jump in at any episode and instantly be brought in ready for the episode that then comes afterwards. Um, so why don't we talk about one of the 
most famous cold opens there is. I've seen this shared on Facebook a billion times. Everyone loves it. It was it like went crazy as soon as the episode aired. That is the Backstreet Boys. Of course, it's the Backstreet Boys. The Backstreet Boys. Brilliant. You want to take it away? Yeah, sure. So if anyone who hasn't seen it, firstly, definitely go watch it because you will laugh so hard. Jake is interviewing people in a lineup. So he's got a woman next to him and they're trying to identify a voice. And all the woman has for Jake to go on is that she heard the criminal singing I Like It That Way by the Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. I want it that way. Thank you. I want it that way in the bathroom. And Jake makes all the criminals sing. Okay, so set up. That's what I've just described. Yeah. The escalation. is The escalation is the singing. We start with one, and then number two comes forward, sings another line. Number three comes in. Number four. Then number five. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they're singing this amazing five-part harmony of the song, I Want It That Way. And it ends, and Jake is like, oh, chills. Literal chills. And the twist... The woman goes, number five, that's the one who killed my brother. And Jake goes, oh, I forgot about that. And then we smash cut to credits. <laughs> so that's the formula. But Brooklyn Nine-Nine takes it further. And it's not just funny skits. It's funny skits that show character. Mm. And one of the most fun things about the cold opens is usually in an episode, sometimes there's group scenes. But often they'll kind of pair off characters to go have their own adventures. Yeah. And cold opens is one of the rare times we get to see like the whole squad interacting together. Mm. And the choices they make as characters. And again, they do this within a minute. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a couple of examples that are quite similar. Yeah. So why don't we talk about one of my favorites, which is the Marshmallow Cold Open. So yes. for those of you who haven't seen, uh, Marshmallow Cold Open, the team is in the break room, minus Captain Holt. They have a bowl of marshmallows. And Jake challenges the team to do the best Holt impression uh, Everyone goes one by one, all trying to be, ooh, this is, what is this strange monstrosity? Sugar uh, in this is quite sweet. Uh, and then Boyle comes out with his, and everyone's like, what the heck, that's a terrible idea. The audience is like, what the heck, Boyle, that's a terrible idea, but Boyle classic move. Boyle move. And then Holt comes in and he's like, why aren't you guys working? What are you doing? He is offered a marshmallow. He eats the marshmallow and his reaction. <laughs> and Boyle was right. Yeah. And that's the twist. And that's the twist. It happens in about 30 seconds. Yeah. Maybe a bit longer than that. Uh, there's actually another one that I really like, which is the uh, Amy is late cold open. And interestingly, these are exactly the same cold open, just with characters slightly changed. So in this one, Amy is... She's like 60 seconds late. It's like, it's just tick nine o'clock and she's not there. And everyone's like, okay, why is she late? Again, Jake instigating. People start providing their reasons. Jake, you know, is bantering with Terry and Holt comes out going, why is no one working? It's nine o'clock. The situation is explained to him. His response as to why Amy is late. She's in line at the bank. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then Amy comes in and She's like, I'm not even that late, guys. Just leave it alone. And then Holt. You will tell us and you will tell us now. There's a problem at the bank. Hot damn. <laughs> and that's the twist. And it, it makes you laugh. So you're kind of giggling, giggling through the whole thing. Yeah. But the twist comes in like a punchline and then it hits the da 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 And the moment you hear the music, you're like, okay, I've heard the joke. The skit's done. I am laughing and I am ready to enjoy this episode. Mm. And that's, I think, that's the big point of these things, right? Is it's get you in the mood for the show. Or if you want to go watch 30 seconds on YouTube and laugh, you can without context or without... Like most of these cold opens, I can't even remember what episode they're from. So that's a formula set up escalation twist. Mm -hmm. These also work because they're very strongly rooted in characters we know. Yeah, I would say it's almost essential that they're rooted in characters that we know. And any good writing is rooted in character. Of course. <laughs> of course. So it would make sense that the best cold opens are cold opens rooted heavily in character. But almost all of them are really like we've got a set of really great characters in this show. Um, and they kind of play into common archetypes that we know 
and that we like. You know, you've got the stern faced leader who is very serious and doesn't do any joking around. You've got the um, kind of joker in Jake who's always mucking around and, you know, just wants to make a game out of everything. You've got the bookish sort of teacher's pet in Amy Santiago. You've got the badass Rosa Diaz. And these characters in the show, they develop a lot more. Yes. Um, so one of the things I often see if I'm doing some script feedback or script editing on comedies is they make very one-dimensional characters and they think they can because it's comedy. And Brooklyn Nine-Nine doesn't do this. So if you take a well-known archetype like Jake Peralta, messes around, doesn't really like the rules, thinks he's a bad boy. We've seen this character on so many shows. But the kind of twist they give him is he's actually a workaholic who is good at his job and cares a lot about it. Mm. Uh, If you look at, say, Rosa Diaz, yes, she's badass and she's scary and she's terrifying, but she's also, like, underneath all that, she's extremely loyal to her friends and will admit when she's wrong. Mm. And I think it could have been very easy to make that character a total lone wolf who never owned up to anything. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, just a little other takeaway. If you are looking at characters, especially for comedy, just if you're going for archetypes, remember when we did the Princess Bride, we're like, just go with the archetypes, it's fine. Well, this is the thing. I think it's really important. Archetypes for comedy, for me, I feel like I've gotten to a point where I've gone, actually, archetypes really do add to comedy and are quite important in story because they give us a sense of a character quickly and easily, right? It's a part of the language of story, if you will. Um, And so as we start to see the Jake Peralta character, we're like, oh, okay, I've seen part of who this guy is, that he's a joker, that he kind of doesn't take things too seriously, he's lighthearted. I can kind of extrapolate as to what this character would do in a lot of situations. That's not where you leave the character, but there's a great way to set up the character. And it's at that point that you start adding in those other dimensions where, you know, he actually falls in love with Amy, his co-worker. He will, like, actually get real serious when he needs to with his friends and, like, support, you know, a lot of his friends through some really hard stuff. Um, Like, I especially love the relationship between Peralta and Diaz. Um, seeing like when Diaz comes out and how she has to deal with that. And, you know, Peralta is there with her family when she comes out to them and it's like this whole thing. And you see a real serious side to him that's able to kind of lay aside the jokes. But then when it comes back to our cold opens, we're back for the jokes because, you know, there's this character that we're still rooted in. Yeah. Uh, Side note, I've never seen a character come out on a show as bisexual before and it was perfectly done. Uh, so for context, I'm bisexual and like I've never seen that done. And when I was growing up, bisexual was always kind of displayed as like this kinky thing. Like that's really all I can remember. I can remember seeing it done in Desperate Housewives and True Blood. Mm. Either that or it was very, very casual. And I've never seen something similar to my experience where like it did feel like big news and coming out and everyone sort of brushed it under the rug because it was like, oh, but you're not gay. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And I'm like, it is to me. Um, and I love that they do occasionally tackle those issues. And obviously, uh, there's more of that with Holt coming up as a black gay police detective. I think one of my favorite episodes is the episode where, um, Terry and Holt have their big sit down about, um, whether they pursue the fact that Terry was discriminated against when, you know, he was pulled up in like his neighborhood because he was a black man. And he's like, I'm a police officer. What are you doing? And the police officer was like, nah, uh, refused to apologize or anything. And Holt doesn't want to pursue it because he doesn't want to make waves. But Terry's like, you know, we have to make waves. And it's this real interesting dynamic between two generations of people dealing with the same issue and the fact, um, that the show was able to handle that so seriously was really cool. I really loved that. Yeah, there was another episode as well where they brought in a woman who had been sexually assaulted and yeah. Rose was like, she should let it go because it's going to ruin her career. And Amy was like, no, she should speak up. And that's a tough argument and there's no mm. right answers. And I, that was amazingly well handled. And I like that they had, just for like the levity, they had Jake in the room just being like, I'm don't understand all of this. I support feminism, even though I don't know which side is right. (laughs) 
Yeah. Um, and it was interesting having like two strong female characters with two very opposing views yeah. have that debate. And like Brooklyn Nine-Nine and other shows as well say like The Good Place, mm-hmm. um, modern sitcoms. Yeah. The laugh track is gone. Um, creators are finding a new way to do comedies. We're now getting sitcoms with character arcs. Mm. They don't stay the same without. Like you said, It's a far cry from Seinfeld, the show about nothing, right? Yeah, or even Friends. Like They did grow on Friends, but not, not to much. this extent. It was yeah. very week by week. Like mm. You said Jake gets together with Amy and you get to see their relationship grow and how they make each other better and mm. their ups and downs. Yeah, and I mean, the two of the characters getting together is a staple of sitcoms you know it's the monica yes. and chandler but um, yeah, this, yeah coming back to it yes bringing I'm us back, back on track we are we're wildly off course here yeah the show its characters are really well defined and really well developed and really well written which i appreciate um and i think that really adds to the openings that they have and adds to their ability to make um situations that bring out kind of the f- funniest in the characters i would guess i'll say because you're not having to take in any exposition you can just enjoy mm. what they're doing um so we're going to talk a little bit more about the cold opens <laughs> we'll come back to that uh using the setup escalation twist formula but looking at a couple that do it in a slightly different way yeah so there's plenty more that do it in sort of the way we've described where uh the setup is you know some sort of instigation of like the joke we're about to see the build-up is just the different characters reacting to that situation and then the twist is you know some obscure reaction that is you know the main one um but there are two that we kind of have noted as ones that uh go away from the writing being the where the joke comes from and actually to a more technical side of filmmaking uh in the editing um so the first one is the Diane Yeast cold open. Uh, so we've got the setup. Jake comes in. Hey, Boyle, how was your weekend? Oh, I'm not feeling very well. I'm sorry to hear that. And Boyle's response is, I watched Bullets Over Broadway, came down with a big old Diane Weast infection. This is our setup. Then it's a uh, zoom. Cut to Jake. Zoom. Cut to Boyle. Zoom. Cut to Jake. Zoom. Cut to boil. Zoom. Like yeast. <laughs> and the twist there is it's obviously it's, a terrible joke, awkward silence, and then it's boil. It's just the zooms. <laughs> it's just the zoom. Why are zooms funny? I don't know, I don't but they know. are. They're so good. Um, but yeah, that's one of those technical things. And it, it's, it's kind of, there's like another level of sort of subverting your expectations because... Haha, uh-huh, previous episode. Uh-huh, nice guys. Um, but there's like another level of that because you're not used to seeing um, sort of such a focus on the technical side of things. Like we see the zoom in, like the quick zooms in the yes. show all the time. It's a show sort of built on that. That's another sort of a sitcom staple. The Office did a lot of it. Um, Parks and Rec do heaps Yeah, of there's a joke and they kind of zoom in on the character's face to emphasize emphasize reactions often way overused and copycats but very tastefully used here um so the other one that i really like um that kind of uses more of a technical side is the cold brew cold open don't mind if i call do <laughs> um so in this one uh peralta is getting himself a cup of coffee in the break room he turns around to diaz and uh holt who are standing there he's like i love this cold brew machine that Boyle brought in and they're like yes it's fantastic i'm already on my second cup i'm already on my third and then suddenly Boyle runs in guys you're drinking too much and they're like wait why are you talking weird twist I'm normal. We're all normal. Uh, and then they're like, wait, if you're normal, then that means we're fast. Are we talking fast? I feel fine. I feel fine. Yep. 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 And it's cutting to each of them as they're suddenly going very, really, very, very, really quickly. Wow. You need some cold brew. So there's a lot going on in this one. So let's talk about like the technical aspects of this because this occasionally brooklyn 99 like it's kind of shot mockumentary style without the interviews of other shows like the office mm. it never does talking heads but if it suits the moment it will cut away to other ways of filming 
Yeah. And this one's uh, like quite interesting because they're shooting sort of your slow-mo footage of sort of one side of a conversation and then the normal footage for the other way. And then, you know, we cut to the actors performing quickly rather than sped up footage. Um, but then it starts to cut really quickly as well. And so you've got this editing that's just like flying by you as you're switching from Diaz to Holt to, uh, to Peralta. Back and forth. And back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's all just like, yep, 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 yep. Um, and it, it's quite, it's a little bit jarring. Like it gets you because this is not something you see in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. No. But that subversion really works to just kind of add to how hilarious this moment is. And the other way this one is different is they stay in the twist a lot longer than the mm. other. So usually you get the twist like Diane... Yeast, like ye yeast. And then you cut uh, this one, the twist is, wait, I'm normal. Like, are you fast? Yeah, are you yeah. fast? Yep, yep. And we stay there for most of the cold yeah, open. Yeah, the editing kind of becomes another joke on yes. top of the twist, the second twist, if you will. Subverting the subversions, if you will. <laughs> if you don't yeah, if you have no idea what we're talking about, go listen to our Nice Guys episode after watching The Nice Guys, because it's hilarious. And I think if you enjoy Brooklyn Nine-Nine, you'll enjoy The Nice Guys. I think you're, if you're a human, you'll enjoy The Nice Guys. That's fair. So do we want to talk about any of the others? Let's rapid fire okay. through a couple of the episodes. Set up, build, and twist. Okay. So, halt dancing, set up. All right, yeah, okay. So they're coming along with their coffee and they see a break dancer. Escalation. Halt decides to diffuse the situation by doing a dance off. Jake's trying to get his phone, but it's dead and trying to get Boyle's phone, but there's butter on his hands for making butter. <laughs> <laughs> and the twist is eventually they get the phone, but the whole situation is diffused and Holt did an amazing dance and no one got any proof of which it. Which leads to one of the best editing tricks Brooklyn Nine-Nine does, which is the smash cut. Yeah. Which is Jake going, no, da 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 <laughs> Which they do like many times and oh, it's, it's funny. It's always a smash to time. intro card. All right, let's try. Jake gets locked in the interrogation room. Uh, set up. All right, so uh, there's a perp who won't talk. Jake's like, I'll go in. I'll get him to talk. He goes in. The door handle breaks off. Escalation. Jake starts freaking out. He's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm locked in here. Uh, is it hot? Is it just me? Is it hot in here? Uh, perp's kind of getting a bit weirded out by this. Jake is just losing his crap. Um, twist. Twist. The perp is like, Dude, I'll confess, just calm down. And Jake's like, ha ha, I got you. That was my plan all along. Additional it's, twist. Yes. Terry then goes, well, I'm glad you're okay because it's going to be another two hours. And Jake's... <laughs> We're going to die. <laughs> all right. Uh, one of my favorites. They're all my favorite. Halloween heist. Jake wakes up. He's like, yes, Halloween. Ha 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 ha. He turns around. Amy's there. She's already awake. Better get a move on. I'm already dressed. Jake's like, well, I'm already dressed too, and I made breakfast. And that's, this is your escalation. Twist. Wait, where are my eggs? They're in my belly. Holt is in the room with them. <laughs> Turns on his lip. Get a move on. It's heist time. <laughs> I love Halloween. Oh. Another one I love, the never wake me up. So at the end of season two, I think, Jake goes to prison. Yeah. So in one of the first episodes back, Jake is in prison. Boyle is sad about it. That's the setup. Building as Jake comes back into the bullpen. He's home from prison and he's like, I'm here to see my best friend Boyle. And everyone's like, yeah, Boyle, you're amazing. And suddenly everyone's chanting Boyle, Boyle, as things get a bit more sus and like less real. And then suddenly it's Terry waking Boyle up. And he's like, Boyle, were you dreaming about Jake again? And he goes, I told you never to make me up. Why would you wake me up? Oh, Boyle. Oh. He loves so much. He loves so much. I think we could talk about all the different cold opens all night. We'll talk about them off podcast. Yes. Yeah. All the time. Um, should we do a quick summary? Yeah. What's our takeaway from this? The takeaway is if you want to use a cold open, set it up, escalate it, twist about the sweet spot is around about 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. Make it character based. And if you can, think of a technical way you can slip something in there too. Can you use slow motion? Can you use editing? Yeah. Can you use music? I think, yeah, for me, 
that character based thing is the most important thing, right? Like it's that character stuff that's gonna make it really stand out, right? Like take you from office level cold opens to Brooklyn Nine-Nine level cold opens. I agree. All right, well, thank you, Kat. Thank you. I don't like this. That's why we have the magic of editing. Oh, yeah, but I have to do that magic. I know. <laughs> <laughs>